Hello, everyone, and welcome to Stoked, the ultimate Star Trek online podcast. My name is Chris. My name is Jeremy. Hey there, Jeremy. Hi there. I'm excited for today's episode, not just because we're drinking beer while we do it, because that's always fun. Hey, mm. cheers. Episode 57, sir. That seems like we're getting so... We're just going to start we're over We're getting soon. old, dude. Yeah. I know. We're going to have to reboot. Um, <laughs> so With a up. younger cast. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then we'll go back in time and uh-huh. change some stuff so that way they don't get pigeonholed into a certain type of stoked storyline. So, J.J. Abrams? Yeah. Talk. Let's talk. <laughs> uh, so, coming up in this episode, today the new uh, weekly series came out, uh, mm-hmm. What Lies Beneath. We both got our hands on it. Very we spooky. Highlights. Yeah, it's a great Halloween episode. Great for Halloween. So, yeah. we're going to talk about that later in this episode because also coming up, we've got a huge section of stuff that Darren Stahl said, the executive producer of it's Star Trek Online. Derek. Oh, I, I mean, it was Dimitri. Anyways, got some good tidbits about season three, about the foundry, mm-hmm. about some ships. Up- well, actually, we've got a whole section of ships. We got ship news too. Yeah, man, we got a whole lot. And, of stuff. dude, yeah, math. Oh yeah, buddy. and your community feedback. Yep, we got a new community feedback question. Mm-hmm. Plus, we'll be featuring the uh, Stowe recommended online resources that you guys sent in. Yeah, I'm actually really excited about the new question because it's timely. It's I, I think it's one of those questions we're going to ask at the right time that Cryptic has a chance to make a difference before they implement something. Could be, yeah. So stay tuned for that. But before we get to all of that, we kind of have some news for the show. Yeah. Something about Stoked. Tell the peeps. Well, you know, for the past several weeks with the weekly series coming out every Saturday, we've been actually playing live. And you could join us and tune in Mm -hmm. on those Saturdays. Well, we've decided to just go ahead and make the darn thing official. Yep. So every Saturday. Every Saturday. And we'll be live doing the game and doing the show. mm -hmm. We'll start around 11 o'clock, usually playing an episode if there is one. If there isn't, we'll probably just jump right into the show prep. Mm -hmm. Now, the cool thing about that, though, is that we talk about things before the show actually goes on that end up not making it into There's stuff. There's like way more show than what goes in the show because a lot of times we'll have to have kind of a lengthy discussion on stuff mm-hmm. just to, to sort of vet it before it makes it into the to show. To make sure we want to talk about it. Yeah. So I mean, like just for an example, we've we've been out here. I got on the live stream around 10.30 a.m. so that way I could be on before the episode came mm-hmm. out. And it's we, almost three. Yeah, it's almost three now, and we're just kind of now getting rolling with the show. Yeah. That's a lot of content, so if you want extra long stoked, you can tune in over jupiterbroadcasting.com slash live, and that's 11 a.m. Pacific. We kind of follow the cryptic time you know, we're mm-hmm. world because we're in that area, well, too. we live on that coast. Yeah. But we do have jupiterbroadcasting.com slash calendar where we have a converter. You can convert it into your own time zone. Mm-hmm. All right, dude. Let's talk about the new weekly episode, What Lies Beneath. What do oh, you think? Oh, boy. Where to start? What was... It was very um, time, uh, it fit the time weekend, you know, it's Halloween weekend. Yeah, which actually makes me wonder if that little gap that we had between the two was put there specifically so that this episode would line up with Halloween. It was probably a double, like, hey, you know, if we push, we get a little extra polish and we get the Halloween. Yeah. And it was, I got to say, great. The Halloween aspect of this was fun. Uh, Yeah. The music. And the sound effects were great. Everything. But what really had a great impact were the sliding, actually automated doors, because there were several times where and a door slid up. Davidian was right there. Right. <laughs> and the the lighting effects. Yeah. I mean, up till now, you know, we p- talked about the lighting effects, and that's referring to the Davidian blue lights and all mm-hmm. that stuff. But this mm-hmm. one was basically like, the lights were out. Yeah. And you had to have a little awesome the light thing was yeah. so cool it was it hovered and there was a little like heat effect of it and like it, a heat it shimmer like of it like holding it itself looked up. just perfect of course that's what they'd have yeah so cool a little probably a little fuel cell in there yeah it generates the fusion reactor maybe the light from that from that from that reactor uh is also what shines nerd but i loved that if it got turned off it had a cool down because you're like oh i can't see god it. where's my flashlight yeah <laughs> um and we were going through some of this to get some some epic shots here for the show and just to kind of – we do demo records where we get entire captures of the instance. Mm-hmm. We get the instance top to bottom. And so we've actually gotten to see a little behind-the-scenes work that they've done on these levels. And the amount of content that they built for this episode God. is nuts. And, in fact, the fact that the lights are out, there's so much of it that you guys don't actually get to appreciate. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that since next episode, it seems like we're going to be going. Well, don't don't spoil it. I don't want to spoil it. But well, all right. You'll spoil, see the spoiler th- cam. It. Okay, here we go. Whoa! All right. So next week, it looks like we're going to be going back in time to the original classic Drazana station yeah. when it was actually in full operation. Yeah. So we should be able to see these same environments fully lit, right. And fully realized. And that could be really cool. I'm going to be really excited about uh, that because especially like the one we're using for our background today is a great 
scene from from this new mission mm-hmm. and i'd love to see this all cleaned up and i hope we get a chance to because you can tell there's so much work that went into this that i they must be planning to use it for at least more than one yeah also you know i already have massive wood for this station and they just made like the bottom end of the station it's caboose they just made it epic yep and we've looked at this map it's extremely impressive i'm i really like this thing from top to bottom i like this game i gotta say this that, episode um since the deferry episodes i think that the environmental artist team the the art team that's putting out these new environments it's is just nuts. really t- kicking up kicking yeah. it up a notch i mean the, so i'm this, really impressed this is something now that this game has forever yeah and not only that but the foundry will have it as yeah. well and and I, and I just can't it can't be underestimated the amount of value that they're able to add every single week for a stretch of time and it's just this content is is going to be down the road just still going to really hold up it's going to mm-hmm. be fun to play yeah I'm really, really, really happy with this episode. I really enjoyed it, and the fact that, the fact that I've gotten this much enjoyment out of a ground-only mission. Oh yeah, good, great point. Yeah. Now another thing that added a lot to it, you know, with the lighting and the ambience and everything, there was a lot of really spooky sounds mm-hmm. and great voiceover work. Yep. yep, some of the best I think we've seen in the game yet. I, I think so. And uh, the well, I don't know that Guardian of Forever boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, okay. So uh, the there was like a there was like a, a horror sound effect, horror movie sound effect that went mm-hmm. off every time. Definitely play this one if you didn't get a chance to go through it with all the sounds on. You got it. You owe it to uh, yourself. Y- yeah, it really adds a lot. And, another layer. Uh, you also got a kind of an interesting uh, reward from this mission. I don't know exactly how it's going to work because I every time I've had something where I generate a field that I have to be inside of mm-hmm. I've always and immediately ended up fighting a bad guy that pulls me out of it or you have to, or it's just too quick of a battle and you end up leaving yeah. it behind thing has like an eight minute cooldown it has an eight minute cooldown but it lasts for like five minutes right but how long do you want to stand in a single position well I don't know so I'm underwhelmed, but it, it is neat. It it's gives got a you cool effect to it. a physical and kinetic resist, which again will be cool against things like Klingons if you fight them in PVE. Oh, true. Uh, that could really well, help. I have a feeling it'll probably come in handy next episode. I'm hoping it will, because otherwise, meh. I got to say, I equipped my proton rifle gun thing. Mm-hmm. I forget which. So did I. A huge difference fighting the Davidians. If you I haven't wish equipped it didn't, that, you I wish that. that its primary fire wasn't so slow. Yeah. That it would maybe did put out a stream of bullets the, instead the, of a single shot. But Yeah. Did you know though? This, did you notice the secondary though can connect to divisions yeah. and go to multiple divisions and yeah. pull all of their energy? Yeah, that is such a money effect. I <laughs> love that, and it looks a little Ghostbustery. Yes, <laughs> and which fit perfect for a the Halloween first time episode. I fired it. The, the absolute first thing that came to mind was, "Don't cross the streams, dude." <laughs> <laughs> all right, should we get into some of the stuff that Daniel Stahl said? Daniel Stahl said stuff. Update. So the first thing that Daniel Stahl said that I think we should talk about is the uh, he went in and did a, did an announcement. It was already after the news that came out, but he went in and did an announcement about Champions Online going free to play. This is more or less an official response from the Stowe side of things, saying you guys calm down. Yeah, and uh, I <laughs> I agree. The forums kind of went you know in their typical faction kind of went kind of crazy over well, this. I was kind of surprised because I. When I saw that news early in the morning, mm-hmm. the first thing I did was, well, i got to go see what the forums are saying about right. this. This has got to be a controversy. <laughs> <laughs> this must be it. This is going to be exciting. And I you were not disappointed, there. I'm sure. <laughs> I was. What? I jumped in there, and the first few posts that I saw, and it wasn't the one from Stahl. Somebody else had posted it, and then mm-hmm. just somebody announced it. There was a few threads like that. Right. And... Everybody was like, oh, this could work out. I could see. Yeah, I, in fact, I remember like, yeah, I really like the hybrid model that they're doing here. I think that's a good approach. Mm-hmm. I thought, well, actually, from I go to the wrong form. <laughs> and then when, then when you're like, then later on in the day, you're like, whoa, did you see the flames in the stove thread? And I was like, no, I didn't. Yeah, they were everywhere. Mm. After just a few hours, the what whole place think? ignited. Well, okay. First of all, I think it's pretty official that Stowe has no plans to go free to play at this time. I don't think it's impossible. Though. No plans. But this has got to be considered a test balloon. I, I think it's on cryptic side of things, it like you know the cryptic as a whole that works on PR and works on Champions uh, Online and works on Neverwinter, you know. Yeah, I hear you. That cryptic, uh, I think that they are test ballooning it. Yes, but I, I get the very distinct impression from Stahl himself that he's not a fan of taking the current Stowe free to play. And there's a reason why it's cryptic points and not Stowe points. There's mm-hmm. a reason why you're logging for for one game is the login for the other game. Right. There's a reason why the chat systems are combined because I really believe not only are they, I think eventually maybe Stowe will go free to play. It's potentially possible. And I could see, uh, uh, I could even see like the Sony Online pass you get where you buy. Yeah, the station pass, right. And you get you get access to all of their MMOs. Right. And I, 
Why wouldn't they have a cryptic pass? I I actually fully expect cryptic pass at some point. But yeah. now that one of their games is free to play, why do you need a pass? Uh, I, I guess there's still a subscription well, because, option. Yeah, exactly. And and I I don't know if I want to see Stall go that direction. But to be honest with you, if uh, if the foundry is is executed well, mm-hmm. we might want a lot of people to be able to get in to just build really great content because there's so many Star Trek. You know, just fans out there. People yeah. that do their own home-created videos. You know, you guys have seen some of those Star Trek fan videos yep, and stuff yep. like that. They would love to do this, but they're not video gamers. Right. They're just not gamers, and they're definitely not MMOers. Because an MMO gamer is a subset of a already niche. Mm-hmm. A big niche, but it's a niche of a niche. Right. And it's, and then you have to also be a Star Trek fan. Right. So you have to be a Star Trek fan that's a gamer that also likes MMOs. Yeah. But you could just be a Star Trek fan that wants to create really cool missions. Mm-hmm. And, and then you can forego the others and just hop right in. And that might be a reason why they, if they open up free-to-play, we might see an influx of those types of people. Yeah, I could see that happening. Again, though, I don't see Stowe in its current form going free-to-play. Not immediately. But why don't we why don't we save that for we'll see where it goes and if right. things develop we'll we'll pick that up. And if you're up. curious about what Stahl said, absolutely we've got the list. Yeah. I think it was a great statement and he keep, continues to respond to it. But he said a lot of other stuff. He did. In fact, one of the things he talked about was uh, he teased a little bit of what this is sort of an amended engineering report, I guess you could call it. Yeah. He's like this is stuff that I was is kind of coming up that I I'll, I'll go back and add. Mm-hmm. And it's some tease stuff that we're going to see prior to season 3 release. And really what jumped out at me is one is we're going to see an Enterprise series bundle pack. As a yeah, as a you, bundle. I'm picturing uniforms and ship pack. Yeah, like the NX01 and the classic Enterprise, right. and they also recently released a screenshot of the Mirror Universe Enterprise timeline, um, and those look pretty those cool too. Those could be some great uniforms. Yeah. Do we have any shots of those? Yeah, we do. Oh yeah, we that's do. That's the right. classic. That's thing. right. This is the classic one, and then uh, that. And there's the Mirror Universe. That's great, dude. Yep. There Another hot topic, and I, I only mentioned this because Stahl actually did put this in the coming soon thing, yeah. is the 300-day beta re- rewards. Yeah. Um, now, he didn't talk a lot about this, but a lot of other people have been asking. They're already listed. Um, they're already listed. It's going to be a new accolade and title, a new character slot. Previously, we've been given a new costume, and I, yeah. I think for the 200-day, we didn't know what it was going to be until it actually landed. Um, but this time, there's no new costume. It's going to be what they're calling a firework ship emote. Oh, they actually labeled as a firework ship emote. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought that was something you just had kind of figured out. Yeah, so you're going to be able to shoot fireworks out from your ship. Yeah, when you're out in space. Just boom. Okay. Neat. 300 days. That's it. <laughs> there you go. It's not awesome, but you know. Well, it's not 365 days. No, but there's going to be a 400-day reward as okay. well. So that one seems like, since that's past the year mark, that should be a little more epic. It should be. Now, can we talk about a little... You know, is there, I know you got a kind of some couple other items you talked about, but I, I'm really itching to talk about the Earth Space Dock stuff. Yeah, because uh, it's going to tie in with our community feedback question here in a little bit. So I kind of want to. Well, I just want to mention really quick that he did officially announce that the Foundry is in closed beta. They've also set up the Foundry forum. So closed if you want to set beta, those up, though, so not on Tribble yet. That's right. Open beta will be when it lands on Tribble, mm. which should be within a couple weeks. Okay. Now the, the thing that the topic that is going to sort of feed into the community feedback that we'll get to aftermath. That's why I wanted to save it for last. Yeah. Good thinking, dude. The one that I really <laughs> want to talk about is there's been more and more discussion about blowing up Earth Space Dock, and redoing it. Do it. And uh, also now, there's also, Stahl has said in the forum that, yeah, you're going to see an improvement to Kronos, uh, or Konos, however you, it's, there's no R in it, but I believe it's pronounced Kronos. I think it's, it's like Kronos. 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 Yeah. But in like Star Trek Six, they call it Kronos. Kronos, yeah. Yeah, okay. Anyways. I think that's the uh, Americanized translation. Um, <laughs> actually, I, you know, before we go any further with this, because I this will save this, but uh, let's just say I'm really excited to see what they're going to do there, and I and stay tuned for the community feedback, because we want to hear your guys' thoughts on it. One little tidbit I'll give you is it sounds like, uh, reading from the forum, that uh, the current interior of Earth Space Dock is actually going to remain. It's going to be, if you if you think of Earth Space Dock, the one from the movie, as like a mushroom, mm-hmm. the what we have now is going to go like in the stem of the mushroom. Yeah, like halfway then, down or so. Yeah, yeah, and then the new stuff will go in the top of the mushroom. So they're building it up, which actually makes sense because the current space dock we interact with is not only much different than that, but much smaller, mm. like hella smaller, considering... Boy, but that's a, it's still really big, though. Well, yes. Yeah, for the game, yeah. But if you think about the top of that mushroom is yeah. supposed to fit full fleets of ships inside of it. Right. Uh, it should be that's, pretty big. That's big. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. Now, the one last thing I want to touch on before we jump into math... Mm. I want to hear people's thoughts on this. So leave a comment where you're watching or head over to jupitercolony.com. Let us know. We've seen some screenshots now of the new Vulcan ship. Called the Dekir. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's got that classic Vulcan ring in the back, which is... I don't know how classic you call it. I think they introduced this ship type in Enterprise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, but... 
if you follow canon, that's supposed to, then those are supposed to have been around since. Anyway. Uh, that's true. That's so, true. Ergo, the classic. <laughs> So what do you think? Do All you right, like you got it? me. You I, like I've always liked the, the Vulcan ship designs. I, I There's just something elegant about them. And without being too uh, too elegant, you know, it's yeah. not like those like Naboo space yachts from Star Wars or anything, you know, that that's super. Yeah, way, way, way over the top. Over the fancy, top. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're a little more they're more logical. Yeah, and they're in a their little design. more logical. Mm-hmm. I'm curious how the uh, nacelle trails, if if there are any, look coming out of that entire you know, I, ring. I don't think it comes out of the ring because I see I see some engines coming out the back. Oh, okay. So I think maybe that's where the ring comes from. Well, I can actually check it out in game. I heard that they've already updated the model in the uh it's like a lieutenant commander rank mission called the Task Force Hippocrates. Oh yeah, and, and Hippocrates. The en- and the uh, and the NPC has this ship yep, or what? The Tapau is using that model. Oh, already. really? Yeah. Oh. So we can check it out in game. So do that and then let us know what you think about I, it. That would be even better. Okay, Jeremy, let's get mathed. Hello, Internet. Today's math segment is going to be a little bit different, so hold on tight for a crazy, wacky ride through Mathland. Instead of doing my usual spiel, where I introduce a topic or mechanic and then explain how it works, I'm going to instead introduce a chart. Now, this chart is a magnificent beast that I crafted with my own bare hands and now offer to each and every one of you beautiful and brilliant people out there as a prize for putting up with my shenanigans week after week after week. And what's the chart for? Well, I'll tell you. You see, what I've done here is laid out the exact skill point price of each and every bridge officer ability currently available in Stowe in terms of what it would cost to maximize that power's potential. For example, if a particular ability requires an instant level skill and two lieutenant level skills, the total investment to maximize that skill's potential is 4,500 skill points. Get it? Got it? Good. The point of this particular resource is to offer each of you a way to better balance your buff-related expenditures, to ensure that you're seeking out abilities that aren't too costly and will therefore leave you room in your skill point pool to beef up those abilities to the max, man. So, go look at the chart. Now back at me. Now back to the chart. Now back at me. Sadly, the chart is not me. But I hope that I've put enough of my hard work and effort into it that at least it smells a little like me. If you have any questions about the chart or about anything else math-related, please feel free to email me, jeremy at jupiterbroadcasting.com. Your math is now diamonds! And welcome to the community feedback segment. I love me this segment. Mm -hmm. And we've got some good ones for you. So we've got a question. We'll get to that in a second. But last week we asked some people out there to send in. We said, peeps, your favorite store resources, let us hear them. That you think other people might not have heard about. Yeah. And Which, we mentioned a couple, StowWiki and the new StarbaseUGC.com. Yeah. I said org last week. I'm sorry, it's .com. Jeremy Fail. I know. But you fixed it, dude. I did. Good Just on now. You. Now, we had like a dozen people send in to uh, us to Stow... They said we were pointing us to StowFan.com. Have you checked out mm-hmm. StowFan.com? I did. I'm actually kind of impressed. Um, this is a, a great resource. It's full of tutorials and guides on how to do different things, a little bit like my math segments that I know oh, a lot cool. of you are fans of. Oh, and a sk- link to a skill planner. That's mm-hmm. always pretty handy. They've got a folks. skill planner. They've also got maps for all the different sectors, including, I, I believe, I haven't, oh. looked, I haven't looked too closely, but I think there's even an interactable map on that site somewhere. That could be really handy. Yeah, so a great resource. Yeah. So many things that people out there need. I think that between this and StowWiki, all of your met needs could be met this is really nice and that kind of explains why this is almost the only link that we received (laughs) now we got it from from about a dozen of you sent this in so clearly there is a good portion of you out there i didn't know about this now uh spider mitch sent in something that is just visually spider mitch right is that what his name yeah spider mitch sent in something that's just visually incredible yeah this is this is a 
a great resource. Not only, okay, you guys might have known we showed Suricata's ship charts yep, previously on the show, great. which is where a lot of this information actually comes from, and Spider Mitch gives him full credit for those. But Spider Mitch has gone through here and added a few things like crew counts and such, as well as actual visual yes. angles, multiple angles of every single ship in the game. This this is one of those, if you're a Stowe player, this is a fantastic, Especially guide. if you are a ship geek. So, you know what? You got to head over to the show notes, jupiterbroadcasting.com, and look for Stoked 57 mm-hmm. and go grab the link for this chart because this is crazy, nuts, super fantastically amazing handy. Wow. That was right? a lot of adjectives. I think so. I think this was a great one. I was really, I was really grateful. No, I agree. I think it deserved every one of those adjectives. Really? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Every last one. Okay. So earlier in the news segment, you guys, we asked, or we mentioned that uh, Stahl's been in the forum a few mm-hmm. times talking about blowing up Earth Space Dock, redesigning Earth Space Dock. Adding content to Quonos, mm-hmm. Quonos, whatever. Uh, actually, revamping. Yeah. He says that the original layout of Quonos right now, you know, that big interior with all the different wings that go yeah. off, it's just not user-friendly. Like, it's too large. It's like Quonos it's, College or something. Qu- Quonos University. Yeah. It feels, like, it feels like a university campus. But a lot of people don't like it, including our good friend Stahl. But what we don't have is details. Right. So, folks out there in the audience, now this stuff's all in the pre-planning phase, I'm sure, because they must... I would think be focused on season three and getting that out the door. I would. Foundry going, getting the weekly content going. I mean, that alone would seem like just a crazy amount of work. Mm -hmm. But maybe we could just kick around a few ideas, just, you know, us, the stoked hosts, and you, the stoked audience. Mm -hmm. What would you like to see added to these places? To either one. Realistic, but yeah. Yeah. What would you like to see? I'd like to really know Quonos because I don't really have any good insights there myself. I got a few ideas for Earth Space Dock, uh, and I've made some mention of this. I'd like to actually fly my ship into Earth Space Dock. Yeah. I think a lot of people would, and that's probably something that's going to come with the large redesign of the, you know, the big mushroom thing that mm. we were talking about earlier. Did you hear they might also have like so. a viewing lounge? Yeah, sort of like Star like Trek, watching uh, the ships come and go. That? Yeah, Star Trek Three, where the damaged Enterprise pulls in. Yep. Oh, that's a that's a great, powerful moment. So it'd be so cool to see your ship there. Yeah. Of course, then the next thing people are going to want is to see persistent damage. Meh. Right? Don't you think? Yeah, they always want more. Well, let's see what you think. <laughs> what would you like to see in Quonos or Earth Space Dock? What could be added that would make you a happy Stoke player? Mm-hmm. Send those into Stoked over Stoked over at Stoked at JupiterBroadcasting.com, and uh, we'll read them in next week's episode. Yeah. Which happens to come out every Tuesday over at Jupiter Broadcasting. And don't forget, you can cho- tune in on Saturday mornings at approximately 11 a.m. and watch it live. Yeah, because that's bitching. Mm-hmm. We've been doing it live. It's like uh, almost like you know 10 o'clock at night now. No, I'm, I'm exaggerating. It's only like 3.30. But you could be here for the whole time. Join us in the chat room and post corrections live. We've got a uh, live chat room that joins us uh, while we do these shows. And, of course, if we somebody s- say something really stupid, that's usually our first line of defense or like our secondary brain, and you can mm-hmm. be part of that. Camp. And then we cut and reshoot the whole thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> we, well, yes, we would. <laughs> They're smarter than us. Let's be honest here. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for watching this week's episode of Stoked, and we'll see you next week. Episode of Community Earth. No, I'm sorry. This is not an episode. I was doing the intro. We already did that. We don't need two intros. <laughs> Three, two. <laughs> sorry. <laughs>